Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import and export configurations in Reaper. Now, one of the most unique things about Reaper is how customizable it is. We can change just about anything. In fact, it's probably the most customizable DAW on the market. For instance, we could change all the menus. If we go over here, all these menus can be completely changed or customized. And we could do that right over here. Customize menus and toolbars. If we open that, this is our main toolbar right here. And we switch to main file. This right here is this menu over here. So if we want to change something, like delete this one, and save it. If we go over here, save as isn't there anymore. Or if we want to change a name from save project to save song, we can rename it, save song, save it here. And that menu is changed right here. So we could delete them, rename them, and add new ones based on our needs. But after we're done with that, we want to save it. And we could save that two different ways. We could save just this menu by choosing export and just export the current menu. Or if we've changed a whole bunch of menus, we could export them all right here. Give it a name, save it with our menu sets, and just save it. Or we can revert back to the default right here. Reset it. And it goes back to our factory settings. We could also change our toolbars right here. If we choose the main toolbar, that represents everything right here. And some of these items I don't use that often, so let's delete them. Like new project, open project, save project, and undo and redo. Now, if I save it, those buttons are removed. And we could also add our own unique ones based on actions. So I can create one for heal. Let's put it over here. Save it. Now, this item right here is going to heal our items. And again, we probably want to save this. Go to export. We can export just this one toolbar or all the menus and toolbars at once. Give it a name and save it. And if we want to put it back, reset it and save it. And it goes back to the factory default. So that's one way of saving our menus and our toolbars. But there's other things to save. If we go to the actions list, you see, I have a lot of custom actions right here. And I've also changed a lot of the keystrokes or shortcuts to trigger actions. So if I want to save that, go down over here to import export, and I could export selected items or export all of them at once. And we could save all the actions as a key map. Give it a name and save it. And later on, if we want to restore that, import it, grab one of those files, and bring it in. So that's our actions. But we could also save in our preferences, under audio, our channel maps. If we've created our own channel maps for our inputs and outputs on our audio interface, like right here, I probably want to save it. So we could save those here as channel maps and import them right here and load them right back in. And we could do that for our inputs and our outputs right here. 
But if we want to save all this stuff and more, we'll go to the General tab in our Preferences to this area right over here. Here's where we can save or import or export a configuration. All these preferences that we set up can be saved right here, in addition to a whole bunch of other things. So let's export a configuration. Our first option is the basic configuration, which is all our preferences and a few other things, as you can see here. And we could save just that, but we could also add in our color themes. These are all the themes that we either customize or imported or downloaded from other users or websites. Then we have our plugin presets right here, our effects chains, JS effects, project and track templates, miscellaneous data, cursors and key maps. The menus and toolbars that I showed you before, the actions and their key bindings or keystrokes that I also showed you before, menu sets, the channel mapping for our hardware inputs and outputs, Reaper scripts, language packs, and Media Explorer databases. But the most important feature of this is saving it all. And we could save it all to one spot or one file. So then we could save. And it saved almost 2,000 files to this one directory. Hit OK. And now we have a backup of everything we've ever customized in Reaper. So if our computer crashes and we have to start all over, we could bring a configuration right back in and we're right back where we left off. Or if we're using an outside studio and we want to install Reaper on that computer, then we could bring in this configuration and we're ready to go. So now, just import it, my configuration. It's actually going to quit Reaper to do this, but that's okay. It lets us know what's going to change. Certain things were placed, certain things not changed. Hit import, and we're right back where we left off. With all our preferences, themes, presets, track templates, key maps and cursors, menus and toolbars, and actions, and much more. Basically everything that we customized. It's kind of nice. And it's kind of important when using a program like Reaper, which is so customizable that you really don't want to start over. So anyway, that's importing and exporting the configurations in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I definitely hope you use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.